An important thing to understand when setting up a Premiere Pro workstation is how media cache files and media cache management works. Media cache files are not media files in the traditional sense in that they typically don't contain things like video frames. But what they are, are they're a series of helper files that are designed to help Premiere Pro run faster in a lot of situations. Media that is not typically designed for editorial use, such as uh, MPEG-based media, Premiere will automatically generate a series of helper files to help for better scrubbing and just general better performance with those files. Usually these files are kept in a local location on your computer, which uh, they're separated out into the media cache files location as well as the media cache database. To look at this on the hard drive, let me switch over to Finder, and you'll see a whole wide range of different files with long file names. Typically, you don't need to touch these in most circumstances, but it's important to note just a couple of things that Premiere is doing under the hood. For one thing, if you're dealing with any type of compressed audio, Premiere will create what we call CFA helper files. These are actually conformed audio files that get stored in the media cache. The vast majority of these cache files you'll note are really, really small, but when we start looking at CFA files, you'll start to see sizes that uh, you know increase above one meg in size, and in some cases can be you know, 10, 20 megs in size. So it's important to note that if you're working with a lot of compressed audio, for example, some type of uh, sound effect library that's all in MP3 format or a music library with 50,000 music files. Just know Premiere, the first time you open up those files in a Premiere Pro project, it is going to be creating these CFA files in the background. And if you have limited hard drive space, that's usually a culprit that can cause your hard drive to kind of fill up. Uh, an easy workaround for this, if you do a lot of work inside of Premiere Pro, it's worth taking the time to go through and convert those files into something like an uncompressed WAV format. And you can set up Media Encoder to do a transcode using something like a watch folder on another computer to make this process really, really simple. Another thing to note about these media cache files is they're generated usually on a system-by-system -system basis, and the faster the drive is where these media cache files exist means your projects are going to load faster. Premiere likes to touch each of these cache files as well as the source media when you open up a project, and that means for very large projects, it means a lot of uh, hits to the drive. And by putting the media on a very fast drive, that can actually improve and speed up your load times with your projects. Typically, we don't recommend putting these on a network share, particularly if you're on gigabit ethernet. Um, the number of cache files coupled with the gigabit speed can sometimes uh, bog down the network switch and cause performance issues in other parts of the building. So typically we recommend keeping the cache files on a local fast drive per user. Uh, this does mean that the cache is maintained on an individual user by user basis. So the first time you open up a project on a different editing machine, it may need to generate cache files in the background for a little bit it's possible to turn on cache management to either delete cache files when the cache exceeds a certain size or to delete files older than a certain time frame. What setting you choose here really depends on the type of editorial work you're working on. If this is something that's long form, such as documentary, um, where you have a lot of media that you're using over you know, several months or even several years, uh, you would probably wanna leave this set to delete the oldest cache files when the cache exceeds a certain size. Otherwise, uh, if you're doing things that uh, you know fast turnaround like news type workflows, deleting the cache files older than a particular time frame is usually a better option. Just keep in mind that uh, deleting the cache is not going to lose you any data. Uh, if a Premiere Pro project can't find cache files that correspond to the media, it'll just rebuild those uh, when you open up the project. One last note to be aware of, uh, you may hear from uh, some storage vendors about putting the cache and the cache database on shared storage. Again, typically in most circumstances, we don't recommend this, but we always recommend following the advice of the manufacturer of your storage. There are some storage partners that have done some special work under the hood to enable putting the cache files in a shared location, but those are vendor specific. So as a general rule, keep the cache files local, but uh, follow your manufacturer's advice when it comes to your shared storage.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Inside Hollywood's Cutting Rooms on the Adobe Creative Cloud channel for more Premiere Pro tutorials and cutting room conversations.